Welcome to the Using Adobe Media Server on Amazon Web Services series of tutorials. In this first session, we will cover the steps needed to get started using Adobe Media Server, or AMS, from the Amazon Marketplace. To purchase Adobe Media Server, you will first need to create an account with Amazon Web Services. If you already have an account, you can log in here as well. Click the Sign Up button to authenticate your account. Use your Amazon credentials to sign in and access Amazon Web Services. If you don't have an Amazon account, enter your email and select I am a new user to create a new account. If this is your first time accessing Amazon Web Services, you will need to complete your contact information. After completing your contact information, read and agree to the terms of use. Click the Create Account and Continue button. Enter your billing information and click Continue. Select a support plan. Depending on your needs, the appropriate plan may vary. For the purposes of this presentation, we'll select a basic plan and then click Continue. Your Amazon Web Services account is now complete. Click the Launch the Amazon Web Services Management Console link. To access the marketplace where Adobe Media Server can be found, click on Amazon Web Services Products and Solutions. Click on AWS Marketplace Software. Then select the Marketplace by clicking on the Marketplace logo. In the Marketplace, enter Adobe Media Server in the search field. The Adobe Media Server AMI will show in the results. Click on the link for AMS to see the options for purchasing. AMS can be deployed on a variety of instance sizes. Each instance type's cost is listed here. Select the region that best suits your deployment needs. Then click Continue. Choose your instance type. Costs are also shown on this page so you can be sure you are getting the correct type for your deployment needs and budget. Before launching your AMS instance, you will need to create a key pair to ensure that you are the authorized individual to manage this server. Scroll down to the Key Pair setting. Click the Visit the Amazon EC2 Console link. Select Create Key Pair and give your key a name. For simplicity, you may want to just call it AMS Key, but you can use any naming convention that is relevant to your organization. Click Yes, and the key will be created. The key information will display here, and you should have downloaded the PEM file of that key. Note where this file downloads and or move it to a location that you can easily reference in the future. Now, let's go back to the Marketplace. Refresh the Marketplace page so the key you created will show as an option. Ensure your key is selected and scroll back up to create your AMI. Verify that you have the correct instance type. Select Launch with one click to create your Adobe Media Server. You will get a page notifying you that the instance is being created and will be ready shortly. You will also be able to verify that the information about your instance is correct. After closing the dialog, you may see that you have no instances. Don't worry, it just takes a few minutes to create the instance and then get it started. Refreshing the page will allow you to see when your new instance is available. Once your instance is up and running, select Manage in AWS Console. Here you can see all the instances you have on your account, as well as notifications and their status. Selecting Access Software will take us to the AMS Information page. Here you can verify on-demand streaming capabilities as well as live streaming functionality. There are also links to useful documentation. To manage the Adobe Media Server, select Connect from the Management Console. You will need to connect to your server via SSH. If you have your own SSH client, the necessary information for connecting is listed here. You can access the server from a browser-based Java SSH client as well, if you don't have a standalone SSH client. The username will default as root, but needs to be AMS admin to allow you to connect to the server. You will need to enter the file path to the key that was downloaded when you created your key pair to use with AMS. This is what will be used as your password for accessing your server. Be sure you keep this key in a safe place. If you are not using a shared computer, you can opt to keep the file location in your browser cache to make connecting to your server via this Java tool easier in the future. Upon the initial launch, you will likely have multiple dialogs open. These dialogs will be to accept the terms of the Java application, 
to create new directory paths, and to add you to the set of known hosts for your AMS instance. With the password reset, you should have full access to your AMS instance. Here you can manage your server through the standard command line interface that Linux uses. To simplify finding and managing your media and applications, we'll use FileZilla to connect to our server. FileZilla is a free application that can be used to help manage your AMS server's contents and applications through a graphic user interface. To properly connect to the server, we'll need to do a couple of steps. First, select Edit. Then, select Settings. To configure using our key, we'll need to associate it with FileZilla. Select SFTP. Select Add Key File, and browse to the PEM file that was downloaded earlier. Click Open to bring it into FileZilla. A dialog will open stating that the format of your key is unsupported. To convert it to a supported format, click Yes. FileZilla will convert your PEM file to a PPK file. Name the new key whatever you would like, and select Save. The PPK file will show in the private keys list. FileZilla should use this key in future connections. Click OK. Open the Site Manager to configure the connection to your AMS server. Before creating a new site, we'll need to have our host DNS or IP. If we go back to our instance, we can get this path. Highlight the public DNS for your server and copy the path. Now we can go back to FileZilla. Select New Site. Paste your host path into the host field. Next, modify the protocol you are using to connect to the server. Select SFTP, which is the protocol used to establish an SSH connection to your server. Next, modify the logon type. Select the normal type for login. Select the user field and enter AMS Admin. Select and remove the password. Insert the password you just created. To establish a connection with the server, select Connect. You should see the call being made to your server and a connection being successfully established. The file structure on the AMS server will show on the right. Navigate to the root folder of the server. Scroll down and identify the MNT and OPT folders. In the OPT folder, there is an Adobe folder. This is where the AMS program and configuration files are. There is also a samples folder here that contains the samples of all the applications available for you to use with AMS. If you wish to use a custom application, this is the location to find the files to start with. Using these applications will be discussed in a later video. The MNT folder has an applications folder which contains your active applications. The AMS server will have live, live packager, multicast, and VOD applications. The live application is what is used for streaming live video, while the VOD application is used for streaming on-demand content. The other applications are more advanced and will be discussed in a later video. In the VOD application, there is a media folder. This is the default folder for you to place your on-demand media assets. Using an application like FileZilla allows you to browse your local computer on the left and drag and drop your media files onto your AMS server on the right. Let's validate that the server is able to properly deliver VOD content. We'll use the sample FLV file. To do this, we'll use Strobe. Strobe is a free media player available using OSMF or the open source media framework. On the Strobe configuration page, remove the default text from the source field of the flash vars. Replace the source path with rtmp colon slash slash and then Paste in your DNS or IP. Then add forward slash VOD forward slash sample to point to the sample FLV in the media folder. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. Select preview and update to view your media. Scroll up to the media player. Click play to verify your media is streaming correctly. If you see the sample video playing, then your server is up and working properly. You are now up and running with Adobe Media Server on Amazon Web Services. This is the same application that is used by NASA and many other organizations. NASA and Jet Propulsion Laboratory's live video streaming architecture was developed on a combination of Adobe Media Server 
Amazon EC2 instances running the popular Nginx caching tier, Elastic Load Balancing, Amazon Route 53 for DNS management, and Amazon CloudFront for content delivery. To read more about this case study, click the link on the slide. Here are some resources to help you get started with AMS on Amazon Web Services. Be sure to download or bookmark these resources so they are quickly available to you should you need them. Thank you for watching and using Adobe Media Server.